92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5 and audio soon to be video on RTC Channel 4. And we have folks in the studio this morning from RTC Channel 4, especially Scott. Good, Good morning. To see you, Tom. Nice to see you and welcome everybody else. All right, Brian Johnson joins us from the Fulton County Community Foundation, part of the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. And if you don't find them downtown now, you will find yeah. them. We'll find them on East 9th Street. Okay. Specifically 227 East 9th Street. The old Street. Kelly Realty so Building Kelly and Re uh, yep. Woodman Accounting was in yep. there for a while. It was, so. and we've completed our move. And okay. so we're we're there. Invite folks to stop by. If you haven't seen the office, we'd love to give you a tour through there. Um, nice new location. So. Perfect. Perfect. So exciting times. Oh, busy times. So busy times. Yeah, busy not only times. everything you do on a normal basis, yes. but moving as yeah. well. Well, there you go. That's <laughs> we we try and work it out. So, but hey, we got a lot of things going on right now. Okay. Um, here in a minute, we're gonna focus on some things that we've done for youth. But um, first of all, I wanted to talk a little bit about some scholarship applications because the deadlines are coming up. Um, we have a few um, what we call summer scholarships. So these are scholarships that are um, not for necessarily for high school current high school graduates, um, anywhere from um, non-traditional students all the way up to graduate level students. So um, the application deadline for all the scholarships that I'm going to talk about here is July 6th. So folks have a little over a week and a half to be able to complete those applications. So just going to go through through a few of them. All of these are available on our website, nicf.org. Okay. Our office moved, but our website has not. So you can still <laughs> find us at the same spot there. But um, So starting off, um, starting off with the Back Home Again in Indiana Scholarship. This is a scholarship that was um, created to help support um, what we call non-traditional students. So the student that didn't necessarily go to college right after they graduated high school, maybe they took a few years off, maybe they're working somewhere. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that's looking for a degree. It can be somebody that's pursuing a degree or certification, but um, it can also help students who maybe are, say, I'm working in a career I don't need a degree, but I need some some training, some additional training to help further myself in my career. Um, so that that can be um, used for that. Also, GED students who have graduated and are pursuing a college degree um, does have to be a Fulton County resident. Um, and if they're a student that um, completed high school, a GPA of 2.5 or higher. Um, is required for that. So um, that's one, and that's that's really wide open to a lot of folks. And it's it's really designed for people who are in our community, really are working, um, don't necessarily want to um, move, but need further education okay. for whether to obtain a career or a current career that they're in. So a really neat scholarship. Um, another one that we have is a Fulton County Youth Fund Scholarship. Um, part of the requirements for this scholarship are that students have graduated from a Fulton County High School and are planning to pursue a career working with children or youth in some form. That's fairly flexible, but something that's, that's focused on um, helping young people once they're done with college. So um, that scholarship is available. Another really neat one is the Eric E. Smoker Memorial Art Scholarship. Of course, Eric was a very talented artist. He was indeed. Um, if you've been anywhere around town, you've probably seen some of Eric's art hanging in various locations, whether you realize it or not. Um, so that's a really neat scholarship. Um, requirements for that are they are graduate of Fulton, Co uh, Fulton County High School. Um, students need to be a current junior or senior in college. Um, be able to maintain a GPA of 2.5 or higher. Um, and also um, some focuses on a field that includes painting, um, sculptures, drawing, or architect. Um, and there's also some consideration um, given to handicapped students who apply for that. Okay. So if you are a current college student and majoring in some form of art, um, I'd encourage you to check that out. Excellent. 
Another one, um, as we proceed here, um, moving into some graduate level work. Um, Ginger Miller was a, a very important figure in our community, um, has impacted um, so many organizations, including the Community Foundation. Um, we have the Ginger Miller Higher Education Scholarship. Um, that scholarship was created in, in memory of, of Ginger. Um, it helps students pursuing any graduate level work. There's no requirements on the field of study, um, but they do need to be a um, current Fulton County resident and also be able to maintain a G or excuse me, maintain a B GPA um, through their um, college career, whether that be somebody who has just completed their undergraduate work and going into graduate school or somebody that's currently in graduate school. Um, both are eligible to apply for that, but that's open to any graduate level work. Okay. And the last one that I'll mention is the Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship. Of course, um, it, it's kind of interesting. In the history of the building that we just moved into, um, Frederick Rake Straw had a law practice out of there for a while. Wow. Um, neat to see that history. Uh, but this is for students who have been accepted into any school of law in the United States. Okay. Um, one of the requirements is that they must have been a Fulton County resident for at least three years during their high school career. Um, so it doesn't have to be somebody that's currently in the community, but somebody that attended a Fulton County school for at least three years. Um, and that's, like I said, open to any law school in the United States. Um, I encourage folks, if you're planning to go to law school or know somebody that's in law school, um, let them know. That's one that's a little bit difficult for us to get the word out because a lot of times our students are spread throughout the United States. But again, those application deadlines are is July 6th, so next Friday. Right, coming um, right that's up. coming up. Um, if you have questions or concerns, I know we, we've gotten a few about those. And if you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to give us a call. Um, Allison Heidi, our scholarship coordinator, and we can get back with you um, quickly. But all those applications are available, nicf.org, and um, they're available online. So Excellent. We'd love to help um, students further their career, um, whether it be something like getting short-term training all the way up to going back to law school. So... Um, also, a reminder um, for high school students that receive scholarships, um, Allison has sent out voucher letters by email. So if you have a question, if you call us and say, hey, my scholarship hasn't been paid yet, what do I need to do to get it? Our first question will be, did you get your voucher letter? Um, sometimes that ends up in spam or junk mail, so okay. you can check that if you haven't gotten that. Um, and get that information back to us as quick as you can, and we'll get those um, scholarships sent to your school. Excellent. So um, it's wonderful to see um, over the last month we've had some time to spend with some of the graduates. It's just amazing to see um, what our next generation is going to be doing. And we say what they're going to be doing, but what they've already done for right. our community. It's pretty impressive, the group of young young kids that we have um, already making a big impact in our community. And they so are grateful for the scholarship help. They are grateful, and we're we're thankful to be able to help with that. So um, just one last thing, grant applications. We do have our community support and impact grant applications available. Um, we don't have a deadline on those, but um, we do ask that if you know you have a project coming up, let us know, um, and we'd be more than happy to talk to you about ideas or if you have questions about what could or couldn't be applied for for a grant we'd love to talk to you about that so um, those are also available on our website okay. so well that's our that's our housekeeping for today okay. um, today we want to continue the conversation about um, the 25 years of the foundation um, and focus on um, some things with our community's youth excellent um, it's it's wonderful to see last month we talked about scholarships that's one way we support our youth but um, there's a lot of ways that we support our youth um, in the community before they even get to that level so wanted to talk a little bit about some of those um, one of the things that was kind of a new thing for the foundation for us in the past what we've always relied on is organizations coming in and and maybe applying for a grant to address a problem um, but one thing that we kept hearing over and over was the need for financial support for students that families couldn't afford to go to preschool. Um, just looking at some of the things, um, 
child's development and i've been able to experience this as a parent over the last few years firsthand um but looking at how children's brain develop it's kind of interesting by the age of five 85 percent of a child's brain is already developed so that is something that um if students don't get started off on that right foot it's difficult for them to catch up so yeah, about 2011, we started looking at what was it, what would it be like to offer preschool scholarships sure. to families, and that progressed into a program that um, 2013 we were able to offer the first scholarships. Um, since 2013, we've been able to help at some level 108 students. Excellent. Go to preschool. It averages about 15 to 25 a year, it just varies. Um, but we're seeing more and more of a need for that. Um, but some of the results of preschool, when we start looking at it, um, students are more likely to read at grade level. Um, just being able to learn their ABCs, learn how to um, learn the basics of reading at an early age and kind of get that in their mind. Um, I hear over and over, I don't speak languages other than English. Right. And sometimes I don't even speak English well. <laughs> Maybe I should go back to preschool to learn that. But um, learning at a young age, it's easier for kids and, and getting them in that habit. So um, students who have attended preschool are more likely to graduate high school, also to be able to obtain a college degree. Um, and also the tendency is that they have a higher income earning throughout their lifetime. So um, really getting students started off on the right foot has been a critical thing. And it's, it's wonderful to see um, that and see the results of the program. Um, talking about scholarships, it, it is time if you are looking for a preschool. Um, I know a lot of parents already have their, their preschool lined up, but if you need need help with that, um, we do have scholarships available for that. Okay, good. Don't hesitate to ask. Um, if you haven't gotten in contact with a preschool, they're familiar with our scholarship application, so that's the first stop. Um, but if you have questions or need help finding a preschool, um, we can point you in the direction of, of some of them that we know of. So, wonderful to see how that program um, has impacted. It's very important program. It is, and it's it's been wonderful to be able to be a part of that and help get students started off. So, Another thing that we um, that the foundation was able to help with, we have the um, Blackadder Sports Complex on the northeast corner of Rochester. That's been um, something that, um, of course, Mabel's name, mm -hmm. actually Brent's name, mm -hmm. is on so many things around right. our community. The Blackadder name has, has made an impact, even though um, the family is no longer with us. They're continuing to make an impact. I've been able to enjoy soccer matches out there, <laughs> watching my stu uh, sure. children play. Sure. Um, the girls' softball league, it's, it's pretty amazing how much they bring in, not only just on a, on a regular league, but also tournaments and, and different things out there. So we've been able to help with a number of things. Of course, um, Lily Endowment, when they were starting the foundations, provided some funding. So during phase three and phase four, there was $195,000 from Lilly Endowment that Fulton County folks directed to that location. Of course, um, it wouldn't have been possible without Mabel giving that organization right. the land to be able to start that. Um, but since that point, we've been able to help with some things like um, irrigation for the soccer fields. Got a lot of grass. You got to water it. Sure. Of course, the last few days, it, it's <laughs> rain, so I don't think they probably run that. But some years, it's right. it turns pretty crunchy if you don't have irrigation. So and it may yet as we get it, into it the month may, of July. You never, you never know. know. Yeah. So um, a few years ago, we were able to help... Um, provide some pavilions for the softball diamonds. If you go out there, there's not a whole lot of shade, but now there's two nice pavilions with picnic tables that families, if they come in for a day-long tournament, they can um, have a picnic lunch, okay, get out good. of the sun. Um, and just this last spring, we were able to provide a mower for the soccer field. If you water your grass, you got to mow it at some point. And they were working with a old mower that, that was in need of some repairs. The newer mower has um, helped them with the mowing also help them it's got some features on it that makes it a little bit safer for them to be able to actually maintain the grass wall um, practices are going on so um, wonderful to see that support for um, youth sports kind of carrying on that theme of course um, 2014 and 15 we're able to help with the akron youth league um, they've done some really major renovations there um, some things that that had been needed and they wanted to do replace some fencing right um, 
make the diamonds nice, um, add some add some grading, add some new turf to the diamonds, um, work on their concession stand, storage, bleachers, um, brand new dugouts, um, have done a really wonderful job with that facility. And so we're able to um, help support them um, in, in a pretty considerable way over eighty thousand dollars in funds to help support that league and it's wonderful to see what that's turned into um also if we head down to the town of fulton Mm -hmm. um, a couple years ago the girls softball league um able to help provide some support for them to renovate their dugouts um move some fencing replace some fencing that was worn out um also with the boys some um, concession stand repairs and things around the league and the, the park there so it's been wonderful to see that Another organization that we we see a huge impact is Camp We Can. Exactly. That was an organization that um, was really born out of of necessity um, and and the idea of some local folks. Um, and and Sid Carr was a big she was big influence force, right. in starting that. Um, and unfortunately, Sid is no longer with right. us, but her legacy continues on um, and some of her family and friends continue to help provide this it's a um, special needs camp for students who may have some sort of um, need for special accommodations right. and it's, it's wonderful to see how students and really they've been able to even offer all the way up to adults um, that camp experience for for individuals who may not be able to participate in a um, standard camp setting because of various reasons, but um, it's really wonderful when you when you see the hundred plus folks who participate in that. It's it's really if you need a heartwarming experience, <laughs> that's nice. Participate for camp. We can volunteer, be a part of that group at some point. It's it can't speak highly enough of that organization. So wonderful to see how that has has it started off by impacting youth, and now it's all the way up to adults, and and really wonderful for our community. And then um, another big event that's coming up here in a couple weeks in July is the fair. Yeah, yes, indeed. Fulton that's, County. Can't, can't miss out on that. Right. Um, one thing that the foundation was able to do um, in 2006 was create a endowment fund that helps support 4-H. Um, of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the name Joanne Bendel. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there are has been or ever will be a bigger advocate for 4-H in our community. Um, Joanne was involved with the Community Foundation, really spearheaded that effort, um, helped them grow that endowment fund, and that has um, been able to support a number of things out at the fairgrounds. Um, Things like um, the Judd Hudkins Arena. I'm sure many folks will be spending some hours out there. If you remember a few years back, the bleachers were getting to the point where it was a safety concern, where when I sat down on the bleachers, I had to look <laughs> down to make sure that it was going to stay there after I sat on it. Um, now there's some new bleachers, some new Excellent. renovations, some concrete, um, some additional handicap accessible um, areas around um, mm-hmm. the arena. Um, some other things, they've been able to make some renovations to some of the buildings, things like doors, roofs, um, some really needed things that there's not always the funding for through the regular program. Right. So this endowment fund has allowed the the 4-H Council and the Fair Board to make some of those improvements and keep maintaining the, the wonderful facility that we have there. So um, it's wonderful to see how that program, and I'd encourage folks, stop out to the fair and, and see what's Enjoy going it. on. That's right. Um, encourage some of our community's youth. Yeah. It's a good opportunity to see some of the things that they're doing. So, so th- those are just some of the snapshots of some of the things that we've done. We could we could probably spend the rest of the day talking about some of the things that we've helped with with youth. But this is kind of a, a snapshot of some of the things okay. that we've been able to provide. Um, support for for our community so um, thank you to our donors for making this possible a lot of these things have come through our community grants our community funds where donors have made contributions and and have us make the the suggestion based on where the current needs are and so um, for donors to trust us and be able to make these grants it's been wonderful so thank you to to all of our donors who have done that so so that that kind of wraps up the conversation about our community's youth. Um, just a quick reminder on the scholarships. Um, application deadline is July 6th 
for all the scholarships, the Rake Straw Law Scholarship, Ginger Miller Higher Education, um, Smoker Art Scholarship, um, Fulton County Youth, and back home again in Indiana. Um, those applications can be found on our website, nicf.org. Um, you can always give us a call if you have questions about scholarships or grants or anything that we do. Um, our phone number stayed the same, 224-3223. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, or for the first time I can say on radio, you can stop by our <laughs> office at 227 East 9th Street um, here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas or um, thoughts you have about things for our community, how to make Fulton County a better place sure. to live, work, and play, and um, we'd love to be able to play a part in helping make those things become a reality. Brian Johnson from the Fulton County Community Foundation. As always, Brian, thanks very much for being here. Keep up the good work for Fulton County. Okay? Well, thanks, Tom.